This is Munich, the capital of the German state of Bavaria. If that conjures up images of Lederhosen, Weisswurst and Oktoberfest, or perhaps the chocolate box Baroque architecture in the old town, then it's time to think again. Prepare to encounter a restaurant that turns those hearty Bavarian clichés on their heads. It's glamorous, theatrical, and flamboyant. Maybe the only michelin star restaurant with orange carpet on the ceiling <laughs> in the world. Welcome to Tantris. Tantris landed like a red and orange spaceship in post-war Munich. Its name comes from Eastern philosophy and refers to the pursuit of enlightenment through pleasure. And where better to pursue pleasure than in a restaurant that has two Michelin stars, is regarded as one of the finest wine restaurants in the world and seen by many as the cradle of German gastronomy. The experience at Tantris is really the interaction of the, the relaxed atmosphere that we offer, the, the staff that is perfectly trained but, but not overly stiff. It's an interaction of guests who want to enjoy themselves and us giving, giving the stage. It's a party atmosphere, but on a very fine dining, exquisite level. Tantris' union of exuberant design and fine dining has made the restaurant one of Germany's most fashionable and exclusive destinations, attracting national and international celebrities. Harry Belafonte was actually here quite a number of times. Larry Hagman. Larry Hagman. <laughs> Dallas. Uh, Brooke Shields. Brooke Shields, yes, they write me very nice pizza, Brooke Shields, yes. Mm -hmm. was, uh... The restaurant guest book is prized by the staff, be it old timers like Pietro Petromili, who has been with the restaurant since it opened. Christeburg. <laughs> no, I, I never sing this one, but I love. Or more recent members of the Tantris team, like American head sommelier, Justin Leone. Jean-Claude Van Damme was uh, also here. It was in his heyday, that's for sure. And then Thomas Müller, of course, a hometown the, hero, but yes. now internationally International. famous. World champion, FC Bayern. The young find their way to us actually more often than not. Uh, Christina Aguilera, that Christina, was yeah. during my first year here. So many huge stars, whether it's Carlos Santana, Rolling Stones, um, I mean, I'm pretty sure Aerosmith's been through here, but um, I think my favorite signature in the book is actually Woody Allen, um, which is a huge page, and I think he signed it like this big. They, they do 20 minute work for their signature, and then uh, later, big for me, uh, thank you, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> With stylish decor, glamorous clientele, and award-winning cuisine, Tantris is also at heart very much a family restaurant. It was opened in 1971 by Fritz Eichbauer, who still visits the restaurant with his wife twice a week for lunch. <laughs> Hello. It's now run by their son, Felix. I was almost born in here. It was um, my my mother um, uh, was 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 pregnant at that time. We had a company uh, party in here, the, the Christmas party, but literally from here she left to give uh, birth to me. So, so we were making fun that even the, I received my first milk bottles uh, out of uh, three-star restaurant chef's uh, hands. And, and so this is, this is home to me. Felix's well-traveled father, tired of having to journey to France for a gourmet meal, wanted to share his love of modern architecture and fine food with his home city which back in the 70s was something of a foodie wasteland. From what I hear, almost no fresh produce was available. Um, people were opening cans, so they were, um, uh, the, the, the food, the style of food and also the, the, the produce was just not very good. That was until Herr Eichbauer Sr. launched Tantris. His vision was when if, if he would bring a restaurant like that, that he experienced on his uh, travels, back to Munich, everybody would, at the end, uh, fall in love with it. But was the Munich of the early 70s ready for such a bold statement? I think he was 10 years too early. 
It did happen, but just it took much more time than we ever could have expected. Eventually, the rest of Munich caught up with the trailblazing Tantris, which to this day resolutely retains its funky 70s vibe. If you enter today, it's, it must be the same feeling like uh, 43 years ago. When we go to a restaurant, we're going for dinner. We're not going to worship in a church. We're not going to bow down before gods. We're going for fun. I don't care whether it's modern or classic as long as it rings true and authentic to the place I'm, I'm dining. And anything, be it a theatrical little flair on the top, which adds to that fun, has to be a good thing. Without Tantris, there wouldn't have been a German food revolution. Hier hat die deutsche Kochgeschichte begonnen. Mit Eckhard Wittigmann, ja, und dann war Heinz Finkler und dann Hans Haas. Remarkably, in over four decades, the restaurant has only had three chefs. And for the past 23 years, Hans Haas has been in charge of the kitchen. Diese Küche, was wir hier machen, ist einfach, ja, ähm, schon eine Gourmet-Küche, aber trotzdem sehr einfach mit den besten Produkten. Zwei große neue 1 Chef Haas Food is really so concentrates on the perfect produce and he wants to have it as clear as possible. So there are never more than, I would say, three ingredients in a, in a dish. And what stands out most for me are his sauces. Yeah, the sauces are really, really divine. It's reduced to the max. is big by fine dining standards, and Chef Haas runs a busy kitchen, catering for 120 diners a night who can order a la carte or dine on a five or eight course gourmet menu at 160 or 200 euros a head. I think he was obviously the, the, the perfect chef because it's a beast to manage. Since it is so big, we always also wanted to, to, if we have the demand, to, to, to accommodate 120 customers. So, there's the haute cuisine and the funky furnishings, but what's the final ingredient? For us as a family and for Tantris, wine was, was always utterly important, and I think we were always very famous for having a fantastic wine cellar. We have between 40 and 50,000 bottles. And we end up in a year selling between 4.3 and 5 million euros per year. When you have a chance to actually taste these wines, you start to really understand the difference in between a, a wine that brings simple pleasure and a wine that's truly monumental, that somehow tugs at you, grabs your soul, and somehow leaves you a little bit different than before you opened the bottle. Justin's job is to maintain and enhance the restaurant as a magnet for wine lovers. An all-encompassing, world-class, quintessential sommelier is, of course, for me, um, the quintessential gentleman, anyway. I think taste is, is absolute. And if you are a doyen of taste, then that should also stretch to everything that you do. The sommelier in a restaurant is one of the trickiest jobs because sommeliers are people imbued with vast, vast knowledge, and they need to have communication skills to be able to communicate that. There are very, very few really good sommeliers. The ones who are really, really good are the enthusiasts, the ones who turn up at your table and are desperate to introduce you to things that you might not have thought you needed.
What the what of the wine? Of wine we something so, uh, something, something something yeah I think yeah. something fresh, something that that speaks to the asparagus, the yeah. vegetal character of the asparagus, but still light and crisp and refreshing and summery. It's a, yeah, it's a warm day. Uh, maybe something in between. In between, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe we go maybe to uh, South Tyrol. Oh yeah. Maybe yeah. South Tyrol and uh, a wonderful selection from Vida Romance. Oh yeah. The Viris uh, Sauvignon Blanc is fantastic. Fresh, mm -hmm. grassy, snappy, a little more body, a um, little more power than your Sancerre. Yeah. Uh, beautiful wine. Okay. Let's try. You we, we try. Let's try. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now with with Justin having an American sommelier, he's who's so knowledgeable and, and gives you such a deep history and background of the wines that you can experience here. This is perhaps um, the most coveted bottle in our cellar. Uh, this is the 1978 Romane Conti from Romane Conti, Domaine de la Romane Conti. It's the kind of wine that when you taste it, you not only taste the greatness of the terroir itself of Romane Conti, um, the power, but with a, such an incredible elegance, um, but also the, the vintage. And the price tag for this treasure of the wine cellar? Unfortunately, this isn't something that everyone can access on our wine list. Um, it does um, lie at around the equivalent of about 22,000 US dollars. Tantris's sense of opulent indulgence runs throughout the restaurant, even to the latest restroom, recently restored in keeping with the original style by Felix's architect wife, Sabine. This is one of the most talked about uh, rooms in the restaurant. Um, and I can, when we're here to dine, I can see ladies coming back from uh, down here. And especially when they're here for the first time, they go, oh my God, you have to check it out later. We just remodeled it. Actually, it, um, we believe um, it looks more like uh, the original one because you know it had been painted over, and so we actually took to scratching the paint off of the furniture to see what the exact uh, pink was um, back when they opened. As a, as a child, I was always uh, it always reminded me of Kermit and, and Miss Piggy. Yeah? I was allowed with my with my uh, mother when I was very young, but nowadays, obviously, it's not a room where I'm where I spend a lot of time in. <laughs> Beautiful bathrooms, fine dining, fabulous wine, fantastical furnishings all contribute to Tantris's aim of maintaining its reputation as a fun night of ambitious scale. Also the Küche allein nützt nichts. Service allein nützt auch nichts und der Wein allein auch nicht, aber alle drei zusammen perfekt. Here it's all about the overall atmosphere and the experience. We offer an, almost an, an evening at the opera. The focus is really on the absolute just sensuality of the sumptuous texture and the colors of the restaurant around you, the, the warmth, hopefully, that's coming from your company and, and, and the laughter and the, uh, and the excitement, but also the relaxed and indulgent nature of the restaurant. <laughs> I'd be fired. <laughs>